Well, mood scales turn out to be an extremely important part of the biocybernaut process, which includes neurofeedback training, uh, depth interviews, um, polygraph recordings, which we share in detail with all of the trainees, um, and the mood scales. Now, when I first began this work as a grad student, I had had profound experience of Alpha training in Joe Camilla's lab. Blew my mind. Um, I went from being a physics major, I'd just gotten a bachelor's degree in physics, and I was a Protestant fundamentalist, and I had no idea what meditation was. Um, and we talked about uh, consciousness, I was thinking that, well, you know, you're asleep or, or you're in a coma or you're conscious. I had no idea of the existence of higher states of consciousness. Uh, but the time in Joe Camilla's chamber, particularly the fourth day where I wasn't a research subject, I was a, uh, I want to play kind of guy, assisted, facilitated by Joanne Gardner, uh, Joe Camilla's then girlfriend and later wife. Uh, she forgot me in the chamber. And I had these incredible out of body experiences playing in the universe, meeting up with and communicating with discorporate entities. This was <laughs> not in the playbook uh, of a um, Lutheran uh, Missouri Synod, um, son of a, um, actually grandson of a Lutheran minister. So, uh, and the, there were profound alterations in mood as well as, I mean, we're talking uh, euphoria, <laughs> we're talking bliss, we're talking ecstasy, we're talking magnificence. And so, uh, how do you, uh, how do you quantify that? And so, um, I knew that the brainwave training that I was embarking on for my doctoral dissertation was going to produce powerful alterations in mood uh, along the way, as well as powerful alterations in personality. So, I'm there in the psych department of Carnegie Mellon University, a lot of psych professors to. Uh, get advice from. And so uh, I, uh, with their guidance, uh, I put together a collection of personality tests and mood scales. And uh, the uh, uh, mood scales were um, produced by ac academic psychologists, in, in some cases by groups of academic psychologists. Um, and um, I uh, modified them in, in various ways, uh, like in, in the case of the multiple affect adjective checklist, which measures conscious and unconscious forms of uh, anxiety, depression, and hostility. I replaced words uh, with synonyms so that uh, I would have my own mood scale uh, test that wasn't copyrighted. And uh, I administered these uh, to large groups of people, found a 97% correlation between the original and my uh, customized version. So now uh, we have mood skills. Well, some of them are yes, no, where a word, but initially they were on sheets of paper. And you took a pencil and it was on the clipboard and you went through and you checked the ones that you felt. Uh, some of them you check either uh, checked or not, so that's yes, no. Some of them were by degrees. So zero would be not at all, one would be a little, two would be moderately, three would be quite a bit, and four would be extremely. So you could rate yourself on how you were feeling on hundreds of different adjectives. And uh, then I would do this after the people had done their alpha training. 
so where they could describe how they felt in their highest states. And so this could also be used as personality tests. If you, instead of saying, how do you feel now? Or how did you feel in your highest alpha? If you ask, how do you feel generally? Then they become personality tests. And so um, from the very beginning of my work, the very first study I did at Carnegie Mellon uh, with uh, psychology uh, undergraduates as the research subject, uh, I have used mood scales to quant so people could uh, quantify uh, how they felt both before their session and then after the session and uh, also at, at the highs of the alpha. Turned out to be extremely important work because along the way, in addition to uh, knowing and that we have three different mood scales that together produce 21 different moods, things like friendly and clear thinking and sleepy, unhappy and dizzy and confusion, bewilderment and anxiety, hostility, depression, um, fear. Um, it's important that the people see the trainees, the people going through the training, it's important that they see data uh, that shows how they have uh, changed as a result of uh, the work that they're doing in the chamber, uh, and the forgiveness work, and the worst case scenarios, and the best case scenarios, and high tech decision making, all of the work they do in the chamber produces changes in brain waves, and we know that brainwaves rule, trademark, brainwaves rule, trademark. And so when people change their brainwaves, they're going to change their emotions, they're going to change their personalities, uh, they're going to change their intelligence, they're going to change their creativity. This is all documented, published research um, that has come out of university labs that I was running or biocybernaut labs that I was running. So the importance of the mood scales became greater when I was still at um, University of California, San Francisco, because uh, while well, being half time there, so that I could do uh, private, personal, and cybernetic development work while still half time within the university, um, I uh, wrote the mood scales into a computer program that now people take the mood scales while they are hooked up and their brain waves are being recorded. And uh, the uh, computer program is able to determine uh, the degree of accuracy of each answer. And if there's at least one standard deviation of doubt about the accuracy of an answer, and the computer will put one signal on the printout and be a 68% chance that that person's answer is wrong. If there's two standard deviations of doubt, that's a 95% chance the person's answer is wrong. If there's three sigmas, it's a 99.7% chance the person's answer is wrong. And this is enormously helpful to the trainer so to give you an example, um, I was in Canada and I was training a uh, actual a staff member and uh, uh, the uh, mood skills detected that he was really angry and uh, he had put zero. He, put, he denied being angry, but the mood scale program that I wrote first in Fortran and I transferred into basic. And then I had somebody else translate it into Pascal. And then uh, another programmer came along and wanted to write it in uh, Java. It now runs in Java. Uh, the computer basically uh, said that his denial of angry was wrong. And he said, well, I'm not angry at anybody. And I said, well, what about your father? Well, he exploded in anger. Don't you say anything about my father. My father was a saint. And he just like went angrily on like that. And so uh, we did some work. And uh, a couple of days later, he admitted that 
this father that he claimed was a saint was uh, so um, mean to him that on the very day he turned 18, that uh, he left home to join the Canadian military to get out of the house to get away from that mean father. And as he walked down the driveway to get into a taxi to go off to join the military, his father stood there yelling at him, you won't last six weeks. And so with the aid of the part of the, the, the surface part of the mood scale reported that you know, there was no anger, but the subtlety that I wrote into the program that detects unconscious emotions was able to detect that he was very angry and it led to then some enormously powerful and beneficial uh, productive work. And it's not just negative emotions that people deny. A lot of people deny their light. I think uh, it was either Maya Angelou or uh, that might have been Maya Angelou who uh, said, it's not our darkness that we're afraid of, it's our light. And um, that's true for many people. And so some people have long lists of denied what we call light ponies. Uh, I can remember working with one <clears throat> very uh, serious uh, professional psychologist who got a big stigma on the word devoted. And when I'm reading the mood scale results to him, and saying, well, you denied devoted and you got big sigmas on it, five, six sigmas on it. And it just stopped him cold. And and he, he, he paused, you see the wheels turning inside. And he goes, yes, yes, I'm really devoted. I'm devoted to my wife. I'm devoted to my children. I'm devoted to my work. And I don't tell anybody about this. And I say, well, maybe it would be beneficial to share some of that. And so for people to own their light, own their good qualities is uh, incredibly inspiring and empowering. And guided by these computerized mood scales, uh, which have a feature, not just scoring the 21 moods, same way as you could when they were done on clipboards with uh, paper and pencil, now that they're done in the chamber on a keyboard while the brainwaves are being recorded, uh, uh, I built in, some people say it's a lie detector. I say, no, no, it's a truth detector. It detects the truth for you. And the truth that you've been denying for who knows what reasons, but we can, you can forgive yourself for those denials and forgive that which you're angry about. Uh, do the um, uh, worst case scenario on what you're afraid of. And then you can take on, you can absorb, you can imbue yourself with all the positive characteristics that are in you, but you're holding them in your unconscious. So the mood scales are an incredibly powerful tool. Some people say at Biosovereign, do you do brainwave training? Do you do neurofeedback? Well, yeah, that's part of what we do. But some people uh, have, they've said, oh, well, we do neurofeedback, but it's not the Biosovereign, not neurofeedback, because it doesn't have the mood scales doesn't have the depth interviews with the trainers that are personally trained. Doesn't have the review of the polygraph records. A lot of people don't even run a polygraph. Uh, they just record the brainwaves and there's no traces for the people to look at afterwards. When you can see your brainwaves, it's like looking inside your mind and you see sometimes skills and abilities that you had no idea that were there. Like maybe there's an incipient pattern for seeing angels. We know that there's a pattern that if it shows up um, and ask people, do you see it? They go, how do you know? I've never told anybody. <laughs> so uh, sometimes that pattern is just very close to breaking through. And uh, so with uh, all of these things that we do at Biostavina, it is a powerful week that, yes, includes food scales. So... Y'all come and uh, have fun and learn about the real you, the inner you and the magnificent you that has been hiding. So valid reasons that you can forgive. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tony Robbins. Listen, if you are looking to improve your brain, your psyche, your ability, your emotions, your ability to really maximize your performance, um, and you wanna really dig into your brain, 
my dear, my dear friend, Dr. Jim Hart, and his BioCyberNet program is extraordinary. I've been through it myself. My wife, Sage, has. Members of my family have. And we found it to be truly extraordinary. But it is not for the faint at heart. Unless you're dead serious about really taking things to the next level, don't bother. We went through the Alpha program designed to maximize your ability to have create Alpha waves. And it was challenging, and it was incredibly rewarding. And I'd recommend it to anybody serious about improving the quality of their lives or including the quality of their family lives as well. So check out Cybernaut, check out Dr. Jim Hart. And uh, if you do, I think you'll be really, really pleased. And the entire time you are learning to think and how you think the, these electrodes create sounds. And you learn how to put yourself in the zone of alpha. But it's a bitch. It's horrible. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody that wants easy experiences, but I'd recommend it to anybody that wants to grow immensely. And by the, and the first day, I'm like, who do I got to shoot to get out of this thing? Oh, it's me. I'm the one that did this shit. <laughs> right? But by the end of the week, all three of us were able to go into this state of alpha. And if you're familiar with alpha, the best way I can describe alpha is there's no problem that can't be solved in alpha. Because every problem that we have was created by us. Thank you for being here and absorbing this information about the science of brainwaves and about the stories of people whose lives have been beneficially altered, improved by doing brainwave training at BioCyberNet. And now I'm reaching out to you to invite you to come and be a part of the BioCyberNet adventure. BioCyberNauts are to inner space what astronauts are to outer space. So come and adventure with us. And if you'd like to leave a comment on the videos, you can do that. Or there's a link you can click if you'd like to learn more. We welcome you to BioCyberNet.